welcome once again to the Faces of Business. I am Damon Postolka. I have Gail Robertson here today. We are going to be talking about manufacturing mark marketing for mold making and automation sales. This is something that I, I don't know that these words have ever been mixed together like this. <laughs> and fun. And yes, fun. fun. Yeah, of course, we're going to have fun. We're going to have fun. So if you're listening out there on LinkedIn Live, go ahead and share where you're listening from. If you hear something that, that you want to ask about, go ahead and ask questions. I'm looking at the comments. Gail might be looking at them there too, but we're ready to answer questions if you have some. But uh, first of all, just let us know where you're coming in from and uh, we might even put you on the screen. So we're going to get going here, Gail. So all first right. of all, I always like on the faces of business for someone to tell me, for people that, that I'm interviewing to tell me, you know, a little bit about your background, because I'm looking at your background and, and, and it's, I wouldn't necessarily think that you would be in mold making marketing and automation marketing because you've done things like for the PGA, you've done things for uh, different entities, uh, municipalities, you've done consulting. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, one of the things that I think is so important in life when it comes to work is transferable skills. So I started out actually going into journalism. That was probably related to my uh, voracious curiosity. And I loved, you know, interviewing people. So it was started out in journalism. Then after that, I, I took a little detour in career and, and ran a bed and breakfast on an island, which that was just, uh, uh, as I said, a little twist. And then I came back and got into fundraising and I was a fundraiser for a culture and recreation complex. And then I would, someone was on the campaign cabinet. So he hired me to be a manager of the marketing department there. And I stayed there for 11 years, loved it. And then uh, decided to uh, go out on my own after they sold, they were selling um, to a larger entity and decided I was going to go and uh, hang out my own shingle, so to speak. And yep. that's where I am now doing uh, marketing. And I did, yes, did, did some work with PJ Golf, uh, worked in um, a few different areas. Uh, also, my background, I've worked in insurance. And it was really through networking, connecting, uh, that I got into manufacturing and specifically into mold making. And absolutely love it. I really enjoy, uh, you know, the people who make things that make things. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. That's a good way to say it about mold making because it yeah. is, they make things, they are things that make other things that go into other things usually to make, to make other stuff. <laughs> and, and you know, the other thing, Damon, I think ever since I was young, I've always liked a bit of the underdog. You know, if, if there was a, an opportunity to, uh, my mom used to say, uh, you know, I would bring home <laughs> sometimes the strays <laughs> and I, I like a challenge. I think that's something as I look back over my life, yeah, different challenges that came up. And I really feel that when it comes to mold making automation, that these are people that are doing the work behind the scenes and they're not getting the attention they deserve because we wouldn't have so many of the items and products that we have now, if it wasn't for, uh, you know, the people making the tools and the cutting tools and, and, you know, the robots that are putting this all together. So yeah. that, that's also how I, I, I find this is a great challenge and there is plenty of opportunity from a marketing perspective because my background is in journalism and telling stories and meeting people, uh, I'm coming into a group of people that at times may need a little bit of help when it comes to uh, breaking out of their shell. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I mean, it's it's funny because when we met, and first of all, I guess got to say, uh, Janine, is this oh, someone that you know? Yeah. Uh, she's our new president of Canadian Association of Mold Makers and Automate Canada. Janine nice. is another fellow rock star, fellow redhead, I must say. There and, you go. Uh, and she is amazing and uh, is just newly hired to uh, take this industry by storm as well. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, she's got some good comments there too, you know, it's it, and, and about your experience and specifically bringing it into molding, which is, which it is, I think, important because your transferable skills come in there and it really does help to bring that outside perspective. And the funny thing from when we started talking from the very first time, 
uh, you know, I, I, many people don't know us, but I actually started drawing molds when I was still in college on paper on the big drafting tables. So I, I, I grew up in a tool room basically from the time I was about 19 years old for, I don't know, I did that for four or five years, even after I was out of college. Cause I kept working for the same company for 10 years after I was in college. And, uh, you know, I, that's a, it's an amazing industry. It's an amazing industry and toolmakers are amazing individuals to be able to build that stuff. Oh my goodness. I mean, it, it's yeah. cool. One of the things that's been an eye opener for me is I'll see, you know, this small plastic part. And then when I see the tool that has to be made to make that part, I, it's, it's amazing. These big pieces of steel and yeah. well, that, uh, that is definitely of interest to bring these stories out. And I've been on um, on the Canadian Association of Mold Makers board. And at the start of the pandemic, I actually came on as on the, we had a task force. So we meet every morning at 7.30 a.m. And that was the best education about the industry. And as I was listening to what was going on, I realized that what they people thought was just that everybody knew. I said, you know, people don't know this. People don't understand it. Uh, people don't understand why manufacturing workers are also essential workers. And we're in the midst of, you know, a lot of discussions right now about the border and who has access to cross the border. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is, this is a big miss in many areas in that understanding why uh, these people need to cross the border uh, to do, you know, tryouts because things would grind to a halt. If, if some of these things stopped further down the line with the supply chain, we wouldn't be able to get, you know, plastic parts for medical devices, hand sanitizer yeah. devices. So, yeah, so it's important that we have this discussion. And this is where, when it comes to the sales, I'm really encouraging more people in sales and manufacturing to start telling these stories, to sharing their knowledge. Uh, I can do so much, but I am, I don't come from that specific background. So I need to pull it out. And literally sometimes it's like pulling information out and it's fascinating. People want to know um, these stories. We were talking a bit beforehand and there's a great uh, person on LinkedIn. Um, I think it's the manufacturing millennial. I'm going to get his name wrong, but he does these great videos. And I saw one the other day of how a glass bowl was made. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. What happens is people share these stories, people talk about them, and people with an engineering mind that can talk about why things work, uh, how things work, people want to know this, and especially clients, future customers want to know that you are capable of explaining some of these things to them. One of the mm -hmm. biggest areas in mold making when it comes to sales is that, you know, it's your knowledge of the industry is so key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. And, it, and people that don't understand, I mean, I grabbed a, a little, a little lid here that I had on, I don't know, it's like an ibuprofen bottle. Yeah. Uh, and if you knew the tool it took to make these, you would be absolutely amazed. This thing probably has a, you know, 120 of these falling out every time it opens up and the, the intricacies of the mechanisms to make the threads on the backside, the, the neural on the outside to grab a hold of is, is pretty crazy. And mm -hmm. when you go into molding and injection molding like that, there's a, there's a specialty in making bottle caps. There's a specialty in making medical products. There's a, even in the tool makers, not just the tool makers, but the molders in themselves, there's a specialty too. You have to be set up obviously to manufacture, but also just understanding the requirements uh, that you need in that type of tooling, mm -hmm. because that's drastically different. That high speed, super high volume kind of thing is drastically different than a specialty you know, automotive part that you're going to make mm -hmm. 10,000 of a year. That's millions and millions a year. And uh, it, it really is a fascinating industry when you look at the tooling and the different kinds of tooling that are required, especially when you look at some of the automotive things like, mm -hmm. you know, the inside of a door, yeah. a, a car door, the plastic Brake of these. Pads. What's that? Brake pads. Like yeah. Brake pads like that. All of those intricate parts, like, safe yeah. parts too yeah yeah 
just so many different things are, are molded every single day and, and tools have to be built for each one of those and robots a lot of times. I mean, I've, I've had the opportunity to, to tour a lot of factories where they um, different kinds of molding. And I've seen, you know, the molding of a, uh, the inside of a dishwasher that's yeah. all in one shot. It comes out and the robot has to grab it and takes it up. And this was in a, in a plant in Tennessee where it comes out of this big machine and goes onto a cooling conveyor and it runs around for, I don't know how many hours up until it comes down and actually in the same building goes right into the assembly line, you know, and the tools that are made mm -hmm. for that are like you put half of it on a semi. That's how heavy they are and how bulky these things are. And then, you know, it comes in like that. And the machines come in uh, in big pieces, too, like that. So it's it's really an interesting industry. Fascinating to me. And then there's the cutting tools to make the tools. Right. So there's a yes. whole streamline. And now one of my uh, one of my uh, main clients, Cavalier Tool here in Windsor. Now they do the large uh, molds. Yeah. Right? They do more larger items. Um, you know, everything from totes, you know, we, those big plastic totes that people yep. are using for, oh, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, the big totes, that's, you know, one of the things that they make as well. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to imagine those tools are pretty massive. And, and when you look at it, right. And you go, okay, how do you use digital Digital transformation, you know, cause, cause again, we're, and I, I don't I'm not saying this in bad at all, but, I went to school for engineering. I know what it's like to be an engineer. We typically don't like to be out in the in the public eye. We don't want to, you know, be doing this and that. We we like to be doing our thing, going like that. So, you know, to get someone that's in the tooling industry or the cutting tools industry to embrace a digital sales method or even being digital or selling socially at all has to be a bit of a challenge in the beginning. It is, and that's why you know we need companies that are showing leadership, and we see that. Uh, and again, um, the one that I'm doing work with right now is Cavalier, which is showing leadership. And a little shout out to them; they were just uh, awarded Large Company of the Year from uh, the Business Excellence Awards here locally. So that's a, an example of you know a company showing uh, leadership in many areas. And yeah, it, it can be a challenge though at the next level in terms of getting some of the salespeople uh, involved and engaged and inspired by to do this. So, you know, an area that I'm working on right now is looking at the process of how to get yeah. um, sales seen as a process. You know, sales isn't something that a lot of times, you know, people think, oh, as long as you can build a relationship and have conversations with people. And that's what they sometimes think I'm saying, but there's a lot more to it. It is about, first of all, you know, you have to do, well, number one is you have to have the right mindset. Yeah. So there's the process I use is you have to sign up, you have to suit up and you have to show up. So the sign up part is you have to decide what do you want to do? Do you want to have success? Do you want to have sales? Do you want to increase sales? Because in 2021, if you're not on digital and you're not embracing digital in the virtual world, it is going to be very difficult to have success unless you have already built up, you know, you may have long-term relationships and I've seen this happen with some, yep. sales, they have those lines, but when they call someone or email someone, guess what? They, someone picks up that phone call or they takes the email. If you're trying to do cold calling right now, email, like it is so difficult to email. It's, and it's probably not going to work. Yeah. Phone, you know, everybody has call display. Like you don't just, yeah. you don't just call someone out of the blue. You better know them a bit. Maybe you might text them first. Uh, but social media, I have reached out to people on Twitter, direct message, LinkedIn, direct message. Now, I don't just connect with them. And then there's a term called pitch slapping. Do not, I stress, do not pitch slap. And pitch slapping is where you send a message to them and then you pitch them right away and say, hi, just connected with you. Hey, do you want to buy from me? So don't do that. Uh, so after you have the right mindset, decide, okay, I want success. I want to sell. And I use the analogy, whether you're going to lose weight or you want to run a marathon, you don't just say, I want to do that and then sit back and wait for magic to happen. The next part is the suiting up, which is research, asking questions, uh, really digging into the industry and, yeah. and finding out, okay, where are the opportunities and finding which platform you might want to use. I usually recommend LinkedIn because it's the, it's the easiest one to start on 
because you don't have to like Twitter is a, you got to feed Twitter a lot. Twitter is, is about yeah. engaging. And I love Twitter because uh, you know, I, I, I move fast. Right. So, and I, to me, it's like breathing. It's just, I can, I can tweet. So I usually recommend LinkedIn. And then the last part is the showing up. And if you've done those first two steps, showing up can become a lot easier. But as we talked about earlier, Damon, you may not always love it. And you have to make decisions in life. Do you want to have success? Do you want to move forward? Do you want to increase your sales pipeline? Then you need to also show up at networking events. Um, and it's it's not always the me, me. You have to also help other people. And, and this is something that how I met you was through, you know, Sam Gupta, Kurt Anderson. These are all people that also uh, help others too. They give back, yeah. they help with connecting. And when you do that, you can tell we're live because my cat's knocking at the door. Wanting to get in. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> she says, hey, what's going on in there? Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's following that process. And once you have that process in place, you, I would guarantee that if you do that, it's not going to happen overnight, but you yeah. will be able to uh, have some success. Well, it is, it is. And I, first of all, I want to say Inger, thanks for, uh, thanks for the comments. I can see you on LinkedIn. I can't, for some reason it's not coming through StreamYard, right? But I can see that's you on LinkedIn. Thanks for, thanks for joining us today. And then, uh, Janine again, the pitch slap. I, that's what I'm going to use because uh, you know we we get them every day, and it's. It, it, I mean, it, it's. I, I really. I always. Sometimes I even have to give a little message back and go, "Does this really work?" It, because I'm not buying, you know. And the last time I bought, I needed someone to build me an app was like never. If yeah. you looked at my if you looked at my profile, you'd think, yeah, he's going to build a lot of software apps. No, I, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so it's it is bad. You know, it's like I've done work in fundraising too, and I've seen this happen in the fundraising world. Again, these are all these transferable skills, and you know, when I work had the bed and breakfast, it's really also listening and deciding who your audience is and uh, creating um, you know content. For in any type of business that your audience or your uh, prospects are going to be interested in. And that's a big part of selling is and fundraising. You know, don't go in and just also, I would say, don't just sell what you're trying to sell. Sell what the person wants to buy. What is their problem? What is it that they are looking to get a resolution to? And when you find that sweet spot, um, I was involved recently in something with fun because I also do work in Canadian mental health. <laughs> That's uh, my nonprofit work I do. And, um, you know, one of the people that we met with, I said to him, what, what's important to you? What would you like in a package? And he sat back and he said, no one's ever asked me that. Yeah. And I thought, wow, that is very telling about how uh, too often we go in guns a blazing saying, this is what I have to sell. I'm going to tell you how great I am. And that's not what I'm suggesting. When I'm talking about telling your story, uh, sharing your insights, you can share how you've helped solve a problem. And that's not bragging. It's not saying that, you know, um, you're all that, but you also, if you don't believe in you and you don't think you have something great to offer, I'll tell you, no one else will. If you don't believe that you can help solve a problem, uh, you know, you may not always be right, but uh, yeah. most of the time you will probably uh, nail it after you've had enough experience. And I will tell you, most of the engineering people that I've come across, they know their stuff. They know how to um, explain what the problem is and how they can help. Uh, a customer. And if you can look at all the questions that you get asked by your customers, and then if all you did on social media was answer those questions, people would come to you. Mm -hmm. uh, because they're going to want to say, hey, tell me more about that, because you're not selling them, you're, you're explaining how you solve a problem, you're sharing uh, maybe a success story you've had. And, and celebrating a success story is is a wonderful uh, way to show other people that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. 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 And you're right. And that's, and you, you touched on one thing though, that I think that most people don't realize is that there are stories to tell, even when you think there aren't stories to tell. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> because uh, you know, I, I honestly, I, I've got pushed into, into doing video and, and doing more social stuff because a friend of mine said, he said, you know, you've got all this experience. Uh, you should, you should tell people about it. I said, what experience? He said, why well, I, I get on a phone call with you, you know, cause he was starting his business at a time. And he says, we talk for an hour and I, I go away just scratching my head with a ton of notes and things I got to do. And he's, and the, and not the point that I know anything cause I'm, I'm full of it as much as anything, but uh, the, we all have these stories inside of us cause we've all had these experiences that we've gone through where we've had to solve problems, where we've had to uh, help explain how to do something to people or with people and show people how to do something. And, engineers or technical people are the worst at not the worst i'm just generalizing here sorry but i think that i think they have a hard time understanding how much they really can help people yeah. just by talking about what they talk about every day like it could be a, a tooling design engineer that that tells somebody how to like on that that cap how to how to make the thread tooling work really well or or solve some problem that they figured out how to solve in molding mm -hmm. you know those are the kind of things that people are trying to figure out either at the at the customer level or at the company level or the the molding level um you know because i've got people that are in the plastics design uh, the plastics part of it, the materials part of it that that spend all their time with engineers, just teaching them about this type of plastic and this application and how it works there, you know, because they need people have those kind of questions and tooling people can do the same thing. Yeah. I just and think there's just a lot of, a lot of opportunity for it. There are. And, you know, because I'm the outsider, oftentimes sitting at the table and listening, I'm like, that's really interesting. They look at me like, what? Like, and I'm like, yes, because there's there's a great story here. And I said, listen, is as a reporter, I'm not blowing smoke. I will tell you, I have my instincts on when I think there's a good story. Recently, we just did a blog on um, on the Cavalier page about uh, the history of the, the tool making in the area. And that all came about from one Saturday morning. I was looking at uh, Canadian Plastics Magazine. Yes, that is my Saturday morning over coffee. And I saw this little blurb talking about uh, how uh, these tools have been made for a Ford. Uh, and it was from like, the archives. And at the bottom, it had international uh, uh, tool making. So I... I asked one of my uh, clients about this and it turns out this was uh, this is like the granddaddy of where all the tool shops started from. So that turned into a whole blog story that's got so much attention because it, yeah. it, it it told this history and I'm reading it going, I did not know that this industry had such deep roots. And uh, there is someone who um, the owner of Cavalier, it's his uncle. I'll do a shout out to Ed Bende because he had everything on it, like a jump drive, this information. And yeah, so there's there's a history story there. Even if you aren't really connected only to mold making and the industry, there's a lot of history to learn and 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 understand, like you said, from the caps on a um, you know, a pill bottle through to the plastic, you know, tubs we use, uh, to car parts, uh, in agriculture. In, in commercial, all of you think about everything that we have that's made of plastic. Yeah, that's it's it's all necessary items during the pandemic. Uh, you know, hand sanitizer dispensers. Yes, uh, they were in short supply, and they needed to have some you know emergency help to get some of these made. Uh, and that was all thanks to a mold maker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I look at them even in my my early career. I mean, if you go into a grocery store and and you walk into the produce department and the misters turned on, I helped to develop some of the first ones that were completely molded in that industry because uh, I worked with that was one of our clients and we spent three years developing them to be very simple and very molded and repeatable. And and uh, another example is I worked with a fire extinguisher manufacturer that's, they're, they're big here now in the United States, to just the little, when you see the little hose on the fire extinguisher and it clips into a little plastic thing, we made the strap and the whole thing to pull wow. together, which was metal before. It goes, you see all these common things. Um, I was lucky enough, I, I, I helped 3M Medical develop uh, surgical, surgical applicators and they're still they're still in production i mean look at how damned old i am and they're still the same product is still in production yeah. still in use and in in uh 
in the operating rooms. It's it's crazy when you think about plastics and mm -hmm. tool making and and the whole industry behind it and what we need to uh, what what it, how big of a part it is in every day. I mean, grab there's a pen in my hand, the the headphones on my head. You know, it just the computer. It's just everything. Everything has those types of components in it. And ventilators. Look at with with COVID. Yeah. I mean, there's so many life saving devices that uh, come about yeah. from, um, plastic. And and I think the more that I mean, that's one part of it, right? To celebrate this. And then um, you know, in terms of uh, back to you know um, you know what the struggles are for some of the salespeople. These are stories. Just telling these stories, celebrating them, talking about the value uh, is one part of it. And the other, um, I give also another analogy. I love my analogies, but, um, you know, when I go, I get up in the morning and, you know, go cycling usually early, but I don't love that. That's not something I love doing, but I like, yeah. I like the result of it. And that's what happens when you're talking about digital or you're talking about social media, you don't necessarily have to love it all the time, but the results that you will get from it are what's important. And, you know, it also gets easier. I think once people get, you know, dip their tool in the water, come to some of the networking events, come and whether it's in person or digital, you know, find your own group of people that you can socialize with. And, you know, if you come in with that open mind, like, as you know, I'm in that, uh, the happy hour with ERP. And I remember the first part, I was like, I didn't even know ERP. What the heck? I remember the first time I talked to Sam, I was like, okay, explain yeah. to me again. And, but it's opened up other doors for me. And that's what's really interesting. So sometimes I think people, when it comes to sales, they're only like, well, that wouldn't, my customers wouldn't be there. But often what happens is there might be someone in one of these groups that is connected to, uh, you know, a customer or an outlet. And I think that's where having that back to, you know, keeping an open mind um, is, is really important. Well, it's showing up. I mean, and, and when you talk about digital, it's 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 showing up on the right platform. It comes back to knowing your persona. Who who is who are the people that you want to be talking to? Mm -hmm. It's not everybody. No, it's, it's a specific it's a specific group. If I want to talk to design engineers, where do design engineers hang out? What do they talk about? What do they do? I mean, you know, you might, you might find that design engineers are big off-road bikers that in this certain industry, and maybe that's what you should be doing. You should be hanging out off-road biking or tweeting about off-road biking or, you know, blog, looking at the blogs. It just depends where you need to go. But I think that the things that a lot of people that are my age can forget is that most of the people in business are not my age anymore. They yeah. are actually, they are actually a bit younger and the by most of the decision makers now uh, have grown up with Google and a cell phone in their hand. And that means that they can search. They want to be able to search. They want to be able to find you. They want to be able to find out about your company. They want to know that the types of problems you solve and they want to be able to find out about you they want to know that your company is a good company do you help in the community do you do you know how do you treat your employees don't let a uh, a crappy review go on un, unresponded to on glass door right and and for those of you that know no that's an employee website which if you haven't checked it and you've got more than a couple of employees you probably want to because it happens it happens a disgruntled employee or something will go on there and it could be could be well founded by on the employees uh part two, but you have to respond to these kind of things because people are looking at that. People are looking at your Google reviews. People are looking at, um, you know, how many, do you have six followers on LinkedIn and they're all your family? You know, it's like, you gotta, there's just so much you gotta do. And you know, one other one, YouTube. YouTube is, and I'm learning so much because I have an 18 year old son and oh my God, YouTube is, uh, well, it's the second uh, largest search like after Google and people yes. it's like it's phenomenal for search and people don't even know sometimes when they're searching something comes up that that was through a YouTube search and mm -hmm. this is something that I'm doing a lot of work on for my own personal and professional development is to learn more about uh, the inner workings of YouTube and it's a fascinating place and especially in this industry 
YouTube is going to be uh, definitely, uh, or it, it should be uh, on the radar if you are a company or a salesperson. You know, you can have your own channel, and it's so easy to start a, a, your own YouTube channel. Oh yeah, and get some content out there. And again, now video, right? We also address that. There is a real fear of doing video, and yet when you dip your toe in that water, then put your foot in, it gets easier. And I know someone I think watching right now has done a, I'm going to do a shout out to Inger who has done, uh, she did a 10 day video challenge. And I just, I'm so yes. impressed when people take on those things outside their comfort zone. And, and I know um, in talking to her, how much that has really helped her in so many other ways. And it didn't start as easy, but nothing that, you know, uh, will get you to that end goal. If you look at, I mean, as we talked, whether cycling or whatever you want to do, uh, you know, run a marathon. If you want to, uh, you know, start up a business, it's it's going to be work. And no longer will people just, um, you know, the, where you had the opportunity maybe to go to a trade show. Now, that's another era, Damon, that I really see in this industry that um, it used to be, you know, uh, companies would get a lot of their business from trade shows and they rely yeah. on trade shows. But I also say, guess what? Remember what happened to Blockbuster? <laughs> there was yeah. a shift and you all of a sudden, you know, oh, things have changed. And one of the things I've always prided myself on and I try to always be aware of is that I said, I always like hear the train in the distance and get out of the way. I said, either get on the train or you're going to get run over by it. And right now, uh, the train is no longer in the distance. It's here. And uh, it's a really good idea to jump on. And there's so many people that can help, you know, uh, uh, even in my circle in marketing, um, you know, there, there's people that can help even with, you know, optimizing your LinkedIn profile, getting your profile. If you need help, there's people there can help you with that. Yeah. Um, and find you don't have to, you know, do everything and be on all platforms. In fact, no, I no. recommend pick one. Um, yeah. You know, if you like TikTok, but go all in like TikTok is. I mean, it can work, but it's uh, it's a little more volatile, right? LinkedIn, yes. I would say, is generally uh, probably for most of people listening here. I'd say stick with LinkedIn. Now, Twitter is also a great place to network, and anybody that wants to um, shift over there and want to ever talk to me and get any help to go on Twitter, it's it's a fascinating place. The Twitter chats. There's a USA mm -hmm. Manufacturing Hour, WBS Rock. So these are Twitter chats. Uh, that are held that often um, I'd recommend any salespeople, especially listening today. Um, and I'll uh, try to after maybe one of us, we can go drop that in the comment section. The uh, But also if anyone wants to just say, hey, I want to know more about, more about that, Gail, let me know and I'll uh, connect you. I'll help you I'll take you over to the Twitter land. It's come yeah. join us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, there, it's, it's, there's, there's unique features about any social media. I mm -hmm. mean, you look at TikTok, you can get something in, what is it? 30 seconds or less, something like that. That's about what you got on a video. Yeah. You look at Instagram, you're going to see pictures and short videos the whole time. You look at Twitter, it's going to roll. It's, you, you got this billboard type effect on Twitter yeah. that that's, that's pretty intoxicating. And you can, you can, so you can see a lot of information if you're following the right people pretty fast. And then LinkedIn has some of the similar features about both, but you know, with LinkedIn, you can, it is more uh, business related as far as the people on there, they're usually on there for, for business reasons where some of the other platforms may not all be there and that's totally fine, but it, but there are just, there's, unique features about every one of them. And it comes back again to your persona and who you want to be hanging out with. Because if, if you don't take the time to figure out when you're, when you're thinking about digital, I always go back to who am I going after and where are they at? Yeah. And I, I start there and that persona is so important and we are so sucky at figuring that out in the beginning. And I still, I still, even with my company, we have gone back and redone our persona and come back and look at our customers, ask more questions to our customers and redo it again because we realize it's not focused enough. Yeah. And, you know, if you, if your crowd hangs out on TikTok, that's where you need to be. Yeah. It really is dictated by that, I think, more than than me choosing where I want to go. I should go where my my uh, kindred people are. Yeah, no, that's a that is a really good point. Is really know, um, you know, where 
where people are that want to discuss with you and have have those uh, those conversations. The other thing I, I'd add about um, on social, because this is often a very uh, big debate when it comes to people, you know, how much, well, they should only share business and never have anything personal. And and I lean more towards showing your what you're comfortable with, right? Yeah. So yeah. One example I have is um, Denise Sylvester, who is with Ramstar, which is a cutting tool company. She posted something talking about she has, a, um, I guess, lives on a farm as well. So she talked yeah. about chicks she has these baby chicks and did this post and then she tied it back to a bit about the cutting tools it was a really interesting post i think that's phenomenal um when someone can take something of their personal life like that because in sales what's the first thing probably someone's going to be talking about including me i'm like so like do you get fresh eggs and it was this whole whole discussion now you don't want to necessarily do all posts like that but yeah. you, know, you know her her personality is such that that is her her posts show more about her um i think it's good sometimes to pull back the curtain a little bit and show a little bit about your interest and who you are because people want to do business with a person right not just if you're only talking about your business and yeah. only talking about selling uh you know what do you have what else do you have to talk about you want to share a little bit about yeah what else do you it, do it's the no like trust I mean, you got to hit the three. If you don't hit the three, it's not going to happen. And, yeah. uh, and it is, you're right. And it, it, it is, and it's hard for some people, you know, because, because yeah. we've been programmed quite honestly to keep business and personal separate. I mean, it was, yeah. it was, it was shouted from the rooftops, uh, you know, in, in 20, 30 years ago. And I think that's where I see balance is always healthy in life. It, Cause anything you go, you know, and it's true. Yeah. There's some things you see on LinkedIn. You're like, man, eh, that's not really like we, and I've heard this. We don't want it to be Facebook. Right. And, and, but you can have balance. And, and I just believe that balance is where you have the greatest health. And, yeah. and I also do yoga. So one of the things I really like about yoga is that it talks a lot about balance and, uh, and then it's your, it's your practice. So you don't have to necessarily compare yourself to others. And, you know, it, also, when you're posting something or you do something, maybe a little edgy or fun, people may tease you or if you get out there and post something. What I usually ask people, I said, who's doing the teasing? It's usually a friend or a family member. And I was talking to someone about this recently. I said, be very careful about who you accept feedback from, especially unsolicited feedback, number one. Yeah, and, um, yeah just be very careful. My At a previous company, <laughs> I had started my this was way back my Twitter profile and I, I had to pick a name quickly. And I was like, ah, oh. so I said, well, Gail, I need something now. And that's how Gail now came out. I said, okay, Gail now I'll pick it. And then I'll, I'll change it later. Well, over time I just left it. And I remember going into meetings sometimes and this senior person would come into meetings and he'd go, it's Gail now. And he'd always tease me about Gail now. But I thought, aha, He's seen me on Twitter. He's remembered it. And I would be out places and I'd hear people like call, Hey, Gail now. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know what it, and that was because more and more on Twitter, I do show a little more of, you know, my personal side and I'll post something, you know, about something else, another part of my life. Yeah. And that's what people really like to talk to me about sometimes and it, it opens up discussions and now i am someone who's a little more on the a little more on the outgoing side so i would say that it's a it's easier for me but that's why i say to people start small with something you have an interest in you can talk yeah about. yeah yeah exactly you can it, it is it's starting small and if you look at there's uh I believe his name's Timothy Hughes from the UK. Mm, uh, yeah, <laughs> DLA, DLA Ignite. I mean, those guys, they, they sell social and they, they talk, write a lot about it. They know what they're doing and they talk about that and they talk about their, you know, the mixture that you should have between um, personal and professional stuff, you know, not in like 82% and 28% or something mm -hmm. like that. But you know, you need, you need to, people want to know that you're human. They, you know, they, it's, it's fine and dandy that you're, very talented at what you do but at the end of the day like you said people want to be able to talk about stuff other than that as well and and know that uh who they're doing business with are are good people 
Yeah. And as you said, we, we, we do engage with people like often, you know, when you go into a room with someone, I mean, you usually don't want to start out by saying, hi, uh, do you want to buy this product from me? Like, hi, I, yeah. Like if I walked in and said, Hey, do you want me to do marketing and social media for you? Da, 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 right. Like, and I don't think I've ever done that. I, I usually, I mean, it, it's sort of a joke because for the longest while I had people say, what exactly do you do? Including my son for the longest while. Now that he's heard a few of these shows, he kind of, and he goes, I think I know more of what you do. So I said, <laughs> yes. yes. Um, that, I think that's familiar because we, we, as we, Again, we put the wall up between personal and business. We've done a lot between business and personal as well. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it is, it is, it is, the lines are blurred. I'm, I'm telling you this, this is the thing. I come back to it again. And I, I talk about this and I, and when I doing, I just did a presentation last week for uh, Temple University, I think it was uh, on, and, and part of what I talk about is digital transformation. And I, I, I spend time talking about the fact that, you know, we've had high speed internet now for over 30 years or 30, whatever it was, it was in the eighties. And we've had cell phones now for over 15 years. The iPhone came out and I think it was 2007. I'd have to look at what, but, but so we, we are just so used to having information at our fingertips mm -hmm. and we've gotten so used to buying bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger ticket items online without even seeing them. Who yep. thought 15 years ago we would be buying cars online like we do now yep. and Carvana and other places. Yeah, the car just shows up. Oh, that's cool. It's like I thought. Here we go. Boom. I just spent $45,000 online. I didn't even think about it, right? It's a known product. But yeah. now think about this. The people that are doing mold making, they have buyers that are totally comfortable watching their videos, mm -hmm. listening to customer testimonials, learning more about their, their, their facilities, what they can do with some examples, problems they've solved. They will buy and never step foot in their facility. Yeah. And it, hap it happens every single day now. Yep. Yeah. And the the other thing that comes with that is that creating that's a little bit of curiosity too for the the salesperson because when the salespeople I mean for the the client when the salespeople are putting content out and talking about things and then that's where someone might come and ask a question they're going to want more information and you know that's that's what happens in terms of the you know the uh, funnel as they say it but I think it you can do it in a very natural way where you know, they'll put out some information and then uh, you step in, you know, I would say lean in, you have some more questions, you want to know more yeah. about what is it that you do. And that's where the salespeople that will do this will be ahead of the game because the market right now is there's so few people doing this in manufacturing. So it is ripe for opportunity. If you're yep. and you talked about this, David, you want yep. to, what is it? You want to be the red I want to be the red M and M in the green M and M bucket. Woo! Yes, I want people seeing me because I am different than the rest of the crowd, and that is what you have to do. You have to be comfortable with it. You yeah. have to you have to wear it, and yeah. you got to go. I am, but you can stand out in your unique goodness and let people understand. Not that you're you got a big ego. Not that anything. You're just you. Just be yeah. you and, and be the company that you are and show the way that you help help people solve problems and show your, you know, that you care about making sure it's a job's done right. Um, you know, and just those things of, of, of doing that is, is so mm -hmm. critical now. And as you said, I, I don't know, we could get online and try to search to see how many, how many mold makers have videos on YouTube now about whatever the, Thing we're trying to talk about i bet we're not going to get overrun by tens of thousands of them no i i'm doing some research on her and i can tell you there it is uh there is an opportunity waiting and i was listening to um actually one of your previous shows i forget who was on here but he was talking about uh doing uh you know using videos as part of an email so you're sending an email yeah. a live video and that i tell you if you do nothing else but do that once in a while and send out that if you want to get noticed Try yep. video, even when I do 
like video usually is pretty easy for me, but I don't often, you know, think do it right away. Sometimes when I'm doing Twitter chats, but I often in the one USA Manufacturing Hour, especially if I'm really busy, I'll go, oh, I'll just do a video instead of typing, right? And I know Kurt Anderson always goes, I love your videos because I just say, yeah. hi, I'm here in Windsor and I give a little, you know, shout out. And, and I know when I click on people and get to see them talking, I love it. Like it, yeah. again, if you want to show your personality and who you are and also stand out in a crowd, this is what I don't understand. If you're in sales and you don't want to stand out in a crowd, I don't know, maybe, maybe think about it. Yeah, 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 exactly. I don't know cool. how you could, like I've done fundraising. I have been out there, you know, doing that type of work. And believe me, you've got to, you know, step up and you got to, you know, be in the limelight sometimes because mm -hmm. you also have to be prepared to maybe, you know, at times, yeah, you may fall on your face. You may do something, you know, out of step, but by far the number of times that I've ever, and usually if you do have a misstep, I mean, have some fun with it and roll with it. And, yeah, um, you know, and, and again, I think if we go back to that, that's a really key point, Damon, that, you know, the red m, &M you want to be the red m, m especially right now, because it's in yeah. a market that you, you're going to eat everybody's lunch. If you can do that, you're going to just yeah. get business just by being different. And you're going to have now, not everybody, but you're going to be, you will attract people. It's that, you know, it's the beacon, right? The, uh, yeah. the beacon off in the distance. So again, it's, it's understanding your customer, be in there answering the questions they're asking or the things they're thinking about, you know, what keeps them up at night? What, what do they worry about, you know, and what gets them going? What are the topics that really they, they like and like to talk about? Talk about that. That's all you have to do. You just talk about that. And because, you know, people that need molds or automation in, in manufacturing, they have the same kind of concerns that any other people in business do they may be a little more technical but they're mm -hmm. thinking about the same thing what's the what's the way for me to get longer life out of my robot or my how do i design a tool that costs you know 20 percent less or gets 25 percent more life what are the new coatings you know all this kind of stuff there's so many things that it just boggles the mind at the amount of information you could be sharing that would help those people if you just got back to and, and thought about it. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I, if you turn the tables of where I came from, so my background is in, you know, storytelling and marketing. I didn't know, I didn't know the difference really for the longest while between a mold maker and a molder. I will fully admit that it took me yeah. a while to figure that out. Cause I was like, Oh, wait a minute. Right. Yeah. And I didn't understand all of the intricacies of, and I still don't. I mean, there's a bit of a nervousness. Sometimes coming on even to a show like this going like, okay, I don't come from a mold making background, but here's the thing. You, you step in and you, you know, ask other people to help you. And the same thing, what I'm asking, you know, when I'm working with salespeople and training is that, you know, trust me a little bit on the marketing and then you help me with the mold making and the, if you give me the content, if you give me the clay, I can help transform that into a story and even suggest whether, you know, should it be an article on LinkedIn? Should it be a blog? Should it be a, you know, a thread on Twitter? And once I have that content, so the people that I can work with, when I get that, that golden content, that's, that's beautiful because I yeah. can figure out how to, how to run with it and how to turn it into a blog or how to use, uh, you know, a YouTube video. Um, I mean that there's so much you can do now with, um, you know, repurposing content. So if you, oh, yeah. if you create that article and then break it up into pieces, share that in, um, in, on other platforms as well. And, and even just shoot, I mean, now with these phones, you can, you can do a video posted on your YouTube channel. Um, I see so many people on YouTube that are like knocking it out of the park and doing the most basic videos. There's yeah. two guys, there's two guys I crack up because they're physiotherapists. It's like low production. They're in this room and they're kind of these like geeky guys. Anyways, they talk about physiotherapy. So sometimes like if I'm like got a sauna and I, I've gone to their channel, they crack me up and then I watch them and 
they are phenomenally successful by being just two guys cutting it up and they do serious physio yeah. low low production yeah and yet and they're very engaging and you know i now sometimes just go sometimes i'll just sit and listen to them because they're they're all so funny um yeah and imagine in mold making if you could be that salesperson that did that again you would be that red m m and over time you're going to you're going to draw attention and that's the sticking point that's where people are afraid to do that because i think they don't want to be the uh they don't want to stand out too much yeah well those that do will will do that's and, right. and that's that's the thing and i think that as you know we're bombarded by stuff every day and we all know this we some of us don't even realize how much we're bombard, bombarded by everything all day long now that's where the need to do that is is, is real mm -hmm. and uh you know mold making and and automation is no different than any other industry really uh when you go down to it yes technically there's differences and the stuff but we're still people doing business with people mm -hmm. uh and that that's is the same for everything and uh janine just said infotainment she's right you got to have it it's got to yeah. be fun it's got to be educational if you can make it educational uh and fun it's even better because it, it's just i mean hell we do, we work hard. We work all damn day long and and put in long hours to do this. If we can have some fun at it, we might as well do it that way because it's not worth it otherwise. And great content. I often hear that people say, "Oh, people have no attention. They 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 don't have you know uh, they don't have time." They don't, oh, that's the other thing. Don't yeah, have time. yeah, yeah. That's what. What was the last show you binge watched on Netflix? Because people have time and people will sit yeah. for hours yeah. and watch something and that's where it's the same thing on youtube i've sat and watched youtube shows with my son now because he's opened up the store i'm like this yeah. is hilarious um and we we do that and we watch different you know shows on netflix periodically and yeah. and you know what you have time but you're prioritizing your time and that leads me to one other thing this is my little bit of my uh a bit of a pet peeve i guess here we go here we, here go. we go here we go this is gail's pet peeve when it comes to People saying they don't have time right now and when it's sales with mold making. Yeah, it. yeah. It used to be people would spend time in an airport, spend time in their car driving to see clients. They went to a, um, uh, a trade show and yep. you would spend three, maybe three, four days there, but you had to get there and you'd spend time at the bar talking to people. So you had all that time you were committing to building relationships, building your networking, if you took even a portion of that time and put it into the virtual world, you would, again, it would go back to, yes, you do have time. And so when I hear not, you don't have time, well, you do, but you're choosing to make other decisions yeah. or to prioritize. And again, in 2021, I come back to that. If you're not on digital and you're not using social, um, there's probably a few jobs that you don't need to be on social media, but most people, um, and here's the thing, even if they're not using uh, a platform, they're consuming. I was talking to someone recently with that and they're saying, oh, they're not really involved in that. But then they're going on and they're telling me all these things they're doing on, on watching on YouTube or they're following, you know, on, on Twitter and they're getting their information there. Yep. And yep. Uh, a lot of people don't really think about that in terms of how people are uh, consuming Mm -hmm. There are other platforms too. So whether Facebook and Instagram, once in a while, I'll put some things related to manufacturing. I talked about this show on my Instagram because there might be somebody that's, you know, there for fun and pleasure on Instagram, but they may know someone that goes, Hey, you know what? That would be a good show for, they might pass it on to someone. Yeah. And that's how yeah. I, I like to have a mix. Instagram's my fun place. That's like my it's yeah. Instagram stories for fun. Yeah. Good. Well, I think, I think, you know, you talk about that. I, I so much good stuff we covered today, and and we're running up on on about about time here. So, um, we just really cover a couple things to to rehash them a little bit and and summarize. You know, mold making and automation. I think as you agree, there's there's a huge opportunity for people if you want to take the plunge and really try to connect with your customers a little differently through digital means with, with YouTube, with some social and other things, you can be that, um, 
red and M and red M and M in the green M and M bowl that stands out and people will, will talk to you first. And quite honestly, that industry, like many others are just waiting for the first red M and M and they're going to show up and they're going to, you're not going to know who they are and you're going to wonder why the hell are they getting all this business? And it's not because they're any better than you that no. they've got any longer history and probably even less history than you do. It's because they've laid it out there and they've let the, let it there for the world to see and people connect with them. That is a great summary, Dave. <laughs> I love, I love red ever. I gotta go get some red ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This, but anyway, it's it's just. I think it's so interesting, and I'm so glad to be able to have you on here, Gail, because I think first of all, your background in media and and the the other things that you've done is is awesome, and seeing how that has has helped you in this role with mold making and automation, and and some of the stuff you're doing with the Canadian Association of Mold Makers and other things. It's just it's really cool to see how that that has you've been able to transfer those skills into this industry and find an industry, quite honestly, that is is ripe to come forward and really stand up and show you know, to the world, what they, what they can do. And, um, cause it's just cool. It's cool. And uh, didn't even talk about hockey too. I, I got into hockey, knew nothing about hockey and, and back in high school covered hockey. And then the one company I worked for, then they bought these hockey teams and I, I actually did a whole, uh, we, we oversaw a marketing campaign and, and branding campaign for a junior B hockey team. So yeah, you know what? You don't have to always know everything about something because there's always people out there that know more and that will be willing to help you. And probably that's the best lesson I learned as a reporter. I don't have to know everything because I can find someone that I can reach out to that will help me and get me the answers. And, you know, just like I reached out to you when I was doing the LinkedIn training, I thought I'm going to yeah. pick your brain and um, you were a great asset in terms of showing how you can shift to digital by having the right mindset though. And I think that's a big kudos to you for, uh, and that's why you're having success with your business because you, you're you willing to take some of those chances and step out on a limb and do video and do things that, um, you know, who would have thought even, you know, yeah, same thing when I was, I mean, cell phones and Google. Yeah, yeah. We had to go to the library and look through the, yeah. <laughs> the card catalog, remember that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's a, I, I just, I, I was telling somebody the other day, if I, someone would have told me I'm doing video like I do now, I would have said, you're crazy. There's no way, you know, and, and it, it, it is just, you, you, you have to roll with the times. The things have changed. And when you look at the, uh, how they are changing, there's, there, as much as you might want it to say the same, it's not, and it'll pass you by. Yeah. And it's, ex I, like, I find it's it exciting. exciting. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. You on your edge. And one yeah. last thing, you know, I remember they, there was that joke that says, you know, remember you used to be watching a show and say, oh, I wonder who that, how old that person is or anything. And you said you don't know and you just went on with life. Now it's like, you know, I'm always looking on my phone as yeah. I'm watching a show, right? So that interconnectedness too between, you know, uh, what we see, um, you know, an email and a TV show and our phone and like all of these things. Now everything's connected. And I always look and see if someone's on Twitter when I'm watching a show and then I'm like, Oh, this show's on Twitter. They get bonus points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, awesome. Well, Gail, it's been, it's been incredible having you on today talking about mold making and, uh, marketing for mold making and automation sales. Uh, I just, I can't, can't thank you enough. I hope we've reached some people that enjoyed it. And I, I just, I just thank you so much. Oh, it was awesome. You, Damon. I love being on your show. Very exciting. Cause I was listening to some of your previous guests. So I feel it's extreme honor. So thank you. Oh, very welcome. Well, for everyone to listen, thank you for being here once again. I will be back after a break for the the holidays i'm not here on thursday i'm not here the the next tuesday but i will be back next thursday and i believe i've got sage all thacker next week and we're going to talk about unconscious bias which i think is this cool 
And, and I think it's, and, and I will just go ahead and say it. When you look at somebody like me, you may not think that I will talk about unconscious bias, but I, I love, I love talking about the subject. So good stuff. Thanks again, Gail. Thanks everyone for listening. We'll be back here again in a week.